So I welcome you to the lecture series on Introduction to Cybersecurity and today our topic is Portable Executables File Format. Now you have seen in the last lecture that we are discussing basic analysis portion of malware detection. Now coming to, the, coming to the today's lecture and this is very important and I'm going to ask two questions from this lecture at the end okay so let's start today's class so first of all what is portable executable file format you have to note that portable executable file format this is used by windows executables object codes and dlls and if I am going to the definition, then portable executable file format is a data structure that contains the information necessary for the Windows operating system loader describing how to manage the wrapped executable code. So, first point, you should know that about PE file format, that is portable executable file format, that this is a data structure and you all know that what is data structure and it, the second thing you have to note that this PE file format contains information which are necessary for the Windows OS loader to describe how to manage the wrapped executable code so that is our PE file format now nearly every file with executable code loaded by Windows is in this PE file format except for the few of the legacy file format which occur on rare occasions in malware. So that is the point you have to note. What is that? That almost all the uh, executable code is going to be loaded in this format but those few of the legacy file formats, they occur on rare occasions in malware. They are not going to obey this format. So that's the point, means that will help us in the case of analysis of the malware. Okay, so that's why we are discussing this portable executable file format in this malware analysis section. Now, is Temporary PE file means a uh, typical PE file begins with a header that includes some informations and most important informations are information about the code, then type of the application, then required library functions, then space requirements. So four important informations that are under the header file okay of a PE file format so you have to note that information about the code type of applications and the required library functions and the space requirements now you have to note that the information re received from this PE header can be of great value for a manual analysis I have just answer why can you comment your point of view that why this information in, in a typical PE file format will be of great value for a malware analysis. You just analyze and comment your answer. Okay, so now portable executable file headers and sections, you already know that PE file headers can provide considerably more information than just imports. And this PE file format contains a header followed by a series of sections. And those sections will be very important for us. So let's discuss about those sections. Okay, you can take a screenshot because they are very important. Executable and then description. .text. This contains the executable code. .rdata. This holds the read-only data that is globally accessible within the program. 
than dot data distorts global data access throughout the program than dot i data sometimes present and stores the import function information and if this section is not present the import function information is stored in the dot r data sections so sometimes question may comes that if dot i data doesn't present then what would happen about those import function information then those import function information will be stored in dot r data section then dot e data sometimes presents and stores the export function information and if this is not present then this export function information is stored in the dot r data sections we have just control at dot r data section then we have dot p data and this presents only in the 64 bit executables and stores exception handling information then dot r s r c this stores resources needed by the executables then we have dot reloc this contains information for relocation of library files so that th these are the important informations okay now pe header summary okay so portable executive header summary contains in useful information for the malware analysis and we will continue to examine it in the subsequent our coming sectors also means those are the topics will be discussed okay so but for today's lecture you have to at least take a screenshot of this and go through each of them just like imports this functions from other libraries that are used by the malware then exports this functions in the malware that are meant to be called by other programs or libraries then we have time data stamp that is very important time when the program was compiled then sections names of sections in the file and their sizes on disks in and in memory then we have subsystems this indicates whether the program is a command line or zui application then we have resources like strings icons menus and other information included in the file okay so i hope you have already taken the screenshot and they are very important so basically you have to remember this one and this one okay now <clears throat> about the references where you will find information about this p files are this one and so i hope that you have got what actually this pe file formats are okay why they are important and what are their different subsections so coming to the today's questions and today's questions are two questions i am going to ask the first question is in a pe file what is e dot e data and dot relog okay in a pe file what is dot e data and dot relog then second question what do you understand by time data stamp what do you understand by time data stamp so comment your answers and i'll go through it so we will meet in the next lecture till then take care and stay safe at home bye